Anchor Church, happy Memorial Day weekend. Thanks for taking some time to tune into an online only service here. Uh, we are kind of adding a bonus uh, message to our ingredient series. We've had a, a great time in the series. This is the formal conclusion of the series called Ingredients. Uh, it's not a recipe or a formula. It's ingredients that ought to be evident in the life following Jesus. And as we've said for the last several weeks together, we could comb through scripture and find hundreds of applications of what our life can look like once we decide to follow Jesus. But have taken just a few weeks to look at a few prominent ingredients that ought to be evident in our lives. Uh, if you've been with us, we've talked about receiving the grace of Jesus and uh, we've talked about repenting, making turns for the better. We've talked about removing the old so that we don't go back to it. We've talked about rebuilding uh, the temple, our spiritual temple to be more like Christ. We've talked about reproducing and uh, not just receiving the gospel, but sharing the gospel with others. And uh, last week we talked about remaining. Like what does it look like to just stay faithful as a follower of Jesus? Today is a bit of a bonus ingredient, uh, but I think that you're gonna love it and it fits so well with this Memorial Day weekend off from live gatherings. We're gonna look at a few different verses today, uh, but we wanna start in Psalms 127 verse two. It says this, it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Saying that um, if every moment of every day, it's just a grind and it is just go, 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 go. Um, something is amiss, something is off because God, one of the things that he loves to do and one of the gifts he loves to give, it says he gives rest to the ones he loves, he, to his loved ones receive uh, rest. For some of you, this is just like the best news ever. Some of you, uh, sleep is your love language. Like keep your acts of service, keep your gifts, just let me sleep, that sleep uh, is some love languages. Look at this verse in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Our uh, final ingredient that we're going to talk on this weekend off of public of corporate gathering is a uh, is the the ingredient of rest. Uh, this is a beautiful ingredient that we see in the life of Jesus, and that we see as something that ought to be evident in our lives as followers of Jesus. I want to start by saying that a rest requires previous exertion. Rest is not laziness. Rest is not coasting. Rest is not just uh, letting somebody else take care of all the details. Rest means that there has been previous activity, previous exertion. It's like a, when you take a, a, a minute to sub out in sports. It's a substitute, like knowing the right time to run and the right time to rest. If there isn't a time of running, if there isn't activity, then it's not rest. It's, it's laziness or it's quitting. We're not talking about quitting. We're not talking about being lazy, but we are talking about knowing the times to run and knowing the times to rest because God gives rest to the one he loves. Jesus, come to me. Anyone who is exhausted, everyone who has been active, anyone who, who has got kind of got to the end of this energy and I will give you rest. I want to tell you that rest is a... Uh, it's so important, it's so vital. This maybe doesn't take a lot of convincing for you, uh, but rest is, is something that is required of us, even our bodies, consistently, uh, daily. It is how we are designed, it is how we are built, it's how we are wired, that we require rest, we require sleep daily. Maybe you can make it a day without it, but, but for us to function properly and for us to live, we must rest. I think even the fact that uh, every day we have to literally turn off is one of the greatest indicators that we are not God, that we, we are not in control. We literally have to shut off, have no control of what's happening during a season where we are asleep. And we are wired to have this act even of humility, of recognizing I'm not in control. I, can't, I, I have my limits, that I am not God. We are reminded of, our, of that to ourselves consistently. Every time that we get tired, every time that we run out of energy, it is a reminder that we are not God and a reminder that we must rest in order to be effective in the days ahead. Um, practically, if you want to continue living, you have to rest. If you want to be productive, you have to rest. It doesn't mean there is no season of activity, but it means there has to be this balance of knowing the right time to run and the right time to rest. 
I, uh, I really do think that rest and humility often go hand in hand. This is maybe a too broad of a statement, but I think oftentimes um, the people who struggle with resting are also struggling with pride because it's, it's on me, I can do more, it, it's, it's my responsibility. We like pack so much on our shoulders and even though we often don't label it as pride, I think that um, rest and humility have to come together. It's like, I, I'm gonna just turn it off for a minute. I'm gonna take this season to recuperate, to acknowledge I don't have enough to keep going at this pace and to acknowledge that um, life will go on even if it's not all on my shoulders. I wanna look uh, here in Genesis chapter one. We see the character of God and uh, how he put his character inside of us. Genesis chapter one, verse 26, as humanity is being created, it says, uh, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. The God's intent was to create you and me, to create human beings in his image and to operate, to function like him, that we are at our best the more we learn to function, to operate in the image and the likeness of God. Jump down to Genesis chapter two, verse one and two says, so the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all of his work. He worked and then he rested. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. Now in our culture, we so uh, easily admire the can't stop, won't stop mentality. We celebrate being tired. We celebrate being busy. We celebrate uh, oftentimes not getting enough sleep in our schedules and how, how little sleep can we get and still function. Um, but I just love that when we look at the character of God and his design to have us function like him, it says he, he absolutely worked hard, but then he rested. And he declared the day of rest, he declared that it was holy. The day that he said was holy was not the day where he produced the most. The day that he declared was holy was the day where he said, I'm gonna just sit back and I'm going to rest from the work. Rest is holy. It doesn't mean that work can't be holy, that work can't be good, but rest is holy. Some of you, this is what you needed to hear. Some of you are just celebrating right now like I knew God was a fan of sleeping in. Uh, he is a fan of rest. He declares rest as holy. Uh, we used to have this joke that um, you could name your bed the word. Like if you named items in your house, like you would name a pet. If you named your bed the word, uh, you could get away with a lot of stuff like saying, um, you know, sorry, I was late today. I just spent a little extra time in the word this morning. And you could just get away with anything. Uh, we would, we, we love making the word jokes uh, when you name your bed the word because it is a place of, of rest. Silly joke aside, um, what is more holy than working for God is resting in God. I want to say that again. I think this is one of the most uh, primary statements I feel like I'm supposed to share with you guys this weekend is what is more holy than working for God is resting in God. Now certainly we have talked a lot and we'll continue to understand like because we understand our fearful responsibility we will work hard to persuade others to share the gospel to live like Jesus to repent and to to remove and to rebuild and to reproduce and like we're, we're going to put forth the work we're going to engage in the effort, but what is declared holy is not just the work we can do for God, but are we willing to take the step of humility and rest in God? He rested on the seventh day. This was God's nature, and we were created in his image, and we are to be more like him. If it needs further clarification, I wanna say again that um, this does not say we quit, we're lazy, we just relax and do nothing. Um, faith without works is dead. Jesus, God worked for six days and then rested on the seventh. That there is engagement, there is work, but work without rest is not godly. An ingredient that has to be in the life of a follower of Jesus is resting. Now this can be challenging. Um, because uh, it can f so easily feel like you're wasting time, you're not fulfilling your calling, you're, if you're not doing something. But I love that if we understand the character of God and the rhythm that he set from creation to work and to rest, to work and to rest, that even when you are in a day or a moment or a season of resting, 
If you are resting in him, you are still growing more into his image. It's not just that you're more growing into his image as you are working hard and, and fulfilling a calling and, and, and getting stuff done, accomplishing, but you are also becoming more like the image of God when you recognize the ingredients of, and I'm also gonna pause, I'm also gonna rest, that it is not a waste of time, that you are still in those moments or in those seasons becoming more and more like like the father we're trying to, to follow. I just want to tell you, um, even talking about rest and speaking on rest and studying on rest um, has been really challenging for me. I'll just be honest and say I've been super convicted um, in what it means to, to rest. And uh, I like being busy. I like a full schedule. I like getting stuff done. And there's just so much to do in this life uh, that rest has been challenging. Uh, I uh, came across this book in this last year, and it's called uh, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Highly recommend. Um, but I was going through this book uh, first on audiobook is how I, I came across it the first time. And uh, I was going through The Ru Ruthless Elimination of Hurry on two and a half times speed. <laughs> a book on eliminating hurry. I was listening to it as fast as I could. And uh, it didn't feel right to go through the ruthless elimination of hurry at two and a half speed. So I bought a copy. I've gone through it a couple times slower, and it's one that I keep going back to and uh, chewing on and uh, letting it challenge me. And uh, again, I would really encourage, it's by John Mark Comer, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And uh, amongst other things in here, uh, what's really highlighted is the spiritual practice of Sabbath, something that's... um challenged, convicted uh, with our day and age and kids and sports and um, how do we Sabbath? How do we Sabbath right? How do we Sabbath well? And I don't have a ton of really great answers for you and it's not something that uh, personally I'm great in at this point or strong in, but it's something that's, um, I just wanna say to you publicly that I am challenged to grow in and how do we in our day and age, how do we Sabbath? Because the Sabbath is holy and we are told uh, in the Ten Commandments, the, the longest commandment is the value and the beauty of respecting the Sabbath. And uh, rest is, is challenging. Like, this is one of the more difficult commandments for some people, or even some of the most difficult ingredients for myself. It's like, I like to learn, I like a project, I like to see achievement and progress, but you want me to, to rest? Uh, and I just think that it is so important especially for people who are wired to, to achieve, wired to accomplish, what does it look like to say, I'm gonna lay even strengths and personalities aside and let them submit to the call of God to rest and the holiness of the Sabbath, holiness uh, of resting. We, uh, our, our staff at Anchor, we've recently gone through this Strengths Finders test and um, we're working through it as a team and um, my strengths uh, are all kind of fall under executor. My top is learner and achiever, and it's it's very much, uh, as I've described, like like go, get better, get tweak, adjust, progress is very much how I'm wired. But something I've really been challenged in, even as preparing for this, this message on rest, is that my strengths don't get to argue with scripture. In fact, my personality, my strengths, the ways that I'm wired, they, they bow to scripture, they submit to scripture. And, uh, I just want to say it clearly that the Bible, the Word of God, the commands of God, the call of God trumps our strengths, trumps our personalities, trumps our desires. Like, it just has to. How we're wired bows to the Bible. How our personalities are submit to Scripture. And it's something that I'm having to speak that to myself. Like, yes, embrace on the days of, of work the ways that God has gifted me, but it doesn't mean you get to bypass rest. Um, I just think it's important for us to, to identify there are strengths that we have and ways that we are designed, but they, uh, they're not excuses to bypass the commands of Scripture. Uh, while we're at it, and I'll be, as I've already been honest about myself, um, I'm going to ask, can I ruffle some Enneagram lovers' feathers today? Uh, we're pre-recording this, so I just have to assume that as you heard that, you said yes, Please challenge us, bring us up, bring it on. Uh, I just really find a challenge, and, and I'm, I'm an, I think there's great value in the Enneagram, and I'm not against it. I'm not super into it, I'm, There's but there's other personality stuff that I'm super into. Uh, so I'm not bashing on it 
uh, at all. But I do think one of the struggles that I see, similar to strengths finders, is um, when someone with the Enneagram says, well, that's, that's the way that I am, so it's an excuse to be unkind, or it's an excuse to not have self-discipline, or it's, not an, it's an excuse to not submit to what Scripture's calling us to do or what He's calling us to be. Like, just because you have a number doesn't mean you get to behave in a certain way, react a certain way, and just be like, oops, that's just, that's my four showing. Uh, sorry, like, we don't get to do that. Like, no, if it's in contradiction to what God's calling us to be, it submits to that. We don't just get, a gay, get away with saying, like, that's just what you get when you get a wing eight in your life. Like, <laughs> It's not how it works. Uh, it is recognizing there are strengths to embrace and personalities to embrace, but we all have to come to scripture and say, God, if you're calling me to be something that isn't that difficult for the way that I'm wired, um, again, I will submit to scripture. My, I will bow to the Bible. Like I will allow who you're calling me to be to be more important and trump that which the way that I am designed or the way that I'm inclined to behave or act. Uh, so here we go. My challenge to you specifically this weekend uh, is will you take some time this weekend to rest? And the goal would be that it goes beyond this weekend. The goal is that it would be an active ingredient consistently in your life to, to rest. And maybe you're wondering how, what does rest look like? Um, I've got this full schedule. We've got the kids. We've got responsibility. Um, what does it look like to rest? Am I just supposed to go take naps? Um, no, although a nap can be holy, I think it'd be good. Uh, I just want to share a little bit further. If we go back to um, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said again, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So Jesus gives rest. Like the end result is that we can experience rest, but how do we get to rest? It starts with Jesus saying, Come to me. It's not just saying, go find a pillow, go get some earplugs and a sleeping mask. Or It's just saying, come to me. That rest is more than just taking a day off of work. Rest is coming to Jesus. If you are finding yourself tired, if you're finding yourself at weary, carrying burdens, that we draw near to Jesus. I want to tell you the most essential uh, avenue to rest is drawing near to Jesus. It's not about a day off or sleeping in on a Saturday morning, although those can be valuable components to your life. But the only place for real rest is Jesus. Any other avenue will leave you unsatisfied. You might get a little bit of relaxation, but you are not gonna find the rest that we can find in Jesus. I wanna challenge you and ask you, where is it that you find yourself naturally going to rest? Maybe another term, to bring it home a little bit is where do you go to unwind? Where do you go when it's been a long day, a long week, when you feel like you've given a lot out and you just get to be selfish for a minute? I wanna ask you and challenge you to identify where do you go to rest? Where do you go to unwind? Is it a substance, a certain activity? Do you kinda of just go mindless on social media? Uh, is it video games? Is it working out? Is it binging Netflix? Is it going in and experiencing the outdoors? Which I'm not saying that these things in and of themselves are wrong, but I think it's important for us to identify when we feel that I need a moment, where do we go? I want to tell you, if we go anywhere else for that relief and that rest, we have just made that something else our God. Because what we are called to go to, to find that rest, it's Jesus. It's come to me. I'm not saying you can never watch Netflix. I'm never saying that you can't go outdoors or play video games or social media. I'm not saying you can't do those things. But if, if that is your source of rest, if that is where you can just, the only place you go to unwind, for one, it's not lasting. It's not uh, as impactful. And that thing is now your God. The God wants to be the source. Like, hey, I need a breath right now. I need a breather. I need, I need some encouragement. I need some, some, some spiritual hydration. Like, I need this rest. And we're called to go to him for that rest, that place to unwind. If you're here listening today and you've got a burden, the place to go with that burden to find rest is, is only to Jesus. Whatever your burden is, maybe you got relational burdens today, family, romantically, work-wise. Maybe you've got physical ailments and burdens today. Maybe it's financial burdens that you're walking through or burdens 
relating to school or decisions or future family burdens. Um, the burdens of like being good enough, trying to perform, trying to please other people. I want to tell you, if you're carrying a burden today, the call of Jesus is not to go do better. His call is come to me. Come to me. Now, I do want to say this, this clearly defines that there is action on our part, action on your part to draw near to Jesus. Take this moment of humility and say, God, here is all of this, or here's this challenge, here's this burden, and I can't be the solution myself, so I'm gonna humbly draw near to you. And it is me stating, like, I can't fix this, and I'm coming to you for the rest that I cannot find on my own. It goes on if we look at verse 29. Jesus says, come to me, I'll give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. He says, take, take my yoke, take my burden, take my weight and responsibility, take it on you and you're gonna find rest for your souls because it, it is easy to bear and it's light. But it says to take it. Again, there is action. This goes all the way back to ingredient number one that we talked about of receiving. All these ingredients layer on top of each other. He says, take it. Like I'm giving you this opportunity to, to exchange the weight that you carry for my rest. But he's asking us to take it. We draw near to him and we receive the grace of his rest on our life as we are resting. And I love that it says it is rest for your soul. We're not just talking about body rest, which has incredible value, is incredibly important, but rest for the soul. I just, man, how about some soul rejuvenation this weekend? Not just we gotta sleep in and miss a day of work, but soul health, soul rest, soul rejuvenation. Again, Jesus, um, he was not opposed to work, uh, he went hard. He, he filled up his schedule with ministry to people. He was even ridiculed for doing too much on the Sabbath. He, he was not a, a God of laziness, but I do want to make it clear. Jesus was an advocate for rest. It's really fun to read the Gospels and the times where Jesus did rest. I love that he goes out on a boat with his disciples and takes a nap. He sleeps on the boat. He hangs out for hours in the mountains. Like he loved enjoying long meals with his friends. Like Jesus he was not against work, he gave his all, but he was also such an advocate for rest. And the answer for us to experience this rest is first and foremost to get with Jesus. What's this look like? I don't know what the rest of your day, I don't know what time you're tuning in, but even today, even as soon as this, this, this video ends, um, how do you get with Jesus? Maybe for some of you it's going and taking a walk. What if you go enjoy the outdoors, but you're taking a moment to actually take in his creation with gratitude, with wonder, with awe, with admiration? What if you rested in him by taking some moments tonight, this afternoon, whenever you're tuning in, and, and you just cherish the relationships that God has brought into your life? And there is a worship of him and a gratitude and a recognition of God in your life. What if you took some time to just move slow? This is hard for me. If we're gonna go out for a walk or a hike, like it's gotta be good. Let's, let's see how fast we, what if we just moved slow? What if we just sat and observed and had uh, an awareness of God? What if we took some time and just sat in silence with the presence of God? What if we practiced Psalms 4610 to be still and know that he's God? To cease work, to cease activity, even if it's minutes, and just know that he is God, that he's still sustaining you. It's his breath in your lungs. It's his power that's keeping our hearts beating. It's his grace that's allowed us to be in this moment and with these people and then the beauty that we get to be surrounded with, like to be still and to move slow and to recognize the beauty and the love and the wonder and the presence of our God. I wanna pray for you and um, we're gonna take just this moment and then what does it look like for you to actually put this ingredient into, into activity in your life, to, to, to rest, to be slow, to observe. Father, I just thank you so much for Anchor Church, anyone and everyone that's tuning in and uh, wherever and whenever they're tuning in. Lord, I just ask that you just give them soul level rest. 
Lord, I pray for that this weekend, but Lord, I pray that soul level rest would become a common ingredient that we can see as followers of Jesus. That when people see people, see those that attend Anchor Church, that um, we're not just go, 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 as much as there is time, we're gonna continue to work hard for the call that you've put on us, but there would be a rhythm that would be obvious of like they run hard, but they rest well, that they're not exhausted, that they're not too busy, that they're, they're, there's time for the person in front of them. God, I just ask that, that would be true of us, that there is space to engage and love the people in front of us, that we, uh, we, we have the rhythm of running and resting so we can do this for a long time, that we don't just have this seasonal go hard and burn out, but we, we're a healthy church with healthy rhythms, that we would last, we'd be looking to the future, that um, we would not be just quick growth and slow death, but we would be people who sustain because of all the ingredients we're looking at, we also have the ingredient of resting, that our souls get rejuvenated as we consistently come to you, we pursue you, we take, we receive the grace and the rest that you extend to us. We love you. I uh, love our church so much. You're an amazing God. Amen. Hey, enjoy the rest of your time. Uh, and we are so excited to be back with you next Sunday as we launch into a brand new series. And please enjoy the presence of the Lord uh, the rest of your time today, this weekend, or whenever you're watching this. And uh, we love you, Anchor Church. Bye.